Hello Elizabetta, thank you for your time. Could you please start by telling me a bit about your background and what your current role entails? I'm a neurologist with 18 years of clinical and drug development experience, in specific in neurodegenerative diseases, including multiple sclerosis, stroke, Parkinson's disease, and also some orphan diseases like myasthenia gravis and polyneuropathy. Uh, I have participated in many clinical trials, testing uh, of interferon, and uh, testing also clinical and uh, MRI biomarker, quality of life assessment, uh, new devices in multiple sclerosis, uh, and as I said before, in uh, orphan uh, treatment, orphan drug for myasthenia, gravis, and polyneuropathy. At the present, I'm working uh, Mercerono as medical director in Global Clinical Development Unit. As main responsibility, I'm responsible for several projects, and also I'm supporting my marketing colleague in developing marketing strategy, health economy strategy, and also to support him to driving uh, the publication plans. Great. Now, in your role, you design phase 3B to 4 corporate and investigator-driven trials, and patient recruitment for clinical trials can be a challenge. How do you think we can help to overcome these challenges? We have uh, met uh, many problems with patient recruitment. Patient recruitment is uh, one of the most important uh, single issues during the development of a clinical trial today. And I think uh, we find uh, we can help uh, over this challenge to adhere in to different phases. One of the first phases really to focus in prior to starting the trial, and uh, we have uh, to optimize uh, the provision for the clinical trial protocol. We need to select a few objectives and endpoints, and also, uh, this point of data need to be scientifically and clinically relevant, and normally is a good uh, uh, starting also to start to collaborate with your steering committee, a key opinion leader from the, from the beginning of the development of your project. But also, what is very important, uh, targeting well your patient population. Patient population need to be familiar for the investigator, and again, it's really important from the beginning to involve your key opinion leader and the steering committee in the selection of the, your target population for the project. But what is also important is the writing in, uh, in this starting phase a clinical trial protocol in simple and plain English. What is uh, also important in the this phase one, in the first phase prior to starting a trial, really to perform a good feasibility to identify uh, the investigator who really have access to the target population and can have also the appropriate resource for, uh, to develop and to run the study. Do you have some questions? No, no, that makes sense. And also, I think it's important to budget in the investigator field for a fair market value because there are different needs in the different country, in the different region. And also, uh, we need to have a clear commitment with the investigator for the timeline. Related when we finalize the contractual agreement with the investigator, we need to have clear specification about the timeline and the number of the patients or each single center need to recruit in each study. Right. And this one is the key important point really prior to starting a trial. The second phase of what is important is really during the recruitment period. Yep. And during the recruitment period, because maybe I'm Italian, but what is very important to create a good communication between the medical responsible and the investigator. The investigator need to have a easy access to the medical responsible to clarify some question about the selection of the patient in the study. And also, 
we need to provide to the physician clear material like uh, educational brochure to explain to the patient uh, what is the study, what will be the conduct of the study, the activity, the responsibility also of the patient during the study. And also for the physician, have the easy access to some internet-based system to evaluate the status of the recruitment in the other site. It's a really a big motivation for the investigator. Okay. And, I, and in my experience in all the trials, we are discussing about the importance of when we design the study, starting the trial. Yeah. during the recruitment phase, but also what is important to achieve the, the objective of the study, what we call phase three, to ensure patient retention during the follow-up okay. of the patient. Yeah. And uh, in what is the, again, what is the most important thing is to motivate the investigator and to provide to the investigator or to the patient clear objective related to the study and also clear uh, share of the result of the study, result of the data, and also to involve the investigator in the publication or in the presentation. Yeah. And also support the investigator to facilitate the patient visit and again to provide to the physician uh, some uh, the physician the investigator the support material study pocket newsletter recognition program by internet really to motivate the physician to remember what they need to do during the follow up of the of the patient yeah. right so you must have observed then in your role um patterns with regards to patient adherence in clinical trials what problems does non-adherence present to the industry? The simple thing is uh, when the patient uh, don't take the drug, the drug cannot work. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and normally it happens in the normal clinical practice. And for this reason, in the normal clinical practice, the perception from the physician and from the patient is a wrong perception about the drug efficacy and really this result is in contrast what is the result from the clinical study published and what is the normal data we are using for the registration of the drug mm -hmm. and also uh, in uh, normally now in each country we are local registry to monitor the different diseases and the different treatment and in local registry um, normally for this reason cannot easily duplicate the data published and can have uh, an impact or can damage the reimbursement policy for the medicine because the local authority normally referring also to the local registry. Okay. So what would you consider to be the main causes of non-adherence? There are several uh, causes, but one of my clinical and also <laughs> experience in the development of TRIA is really because in the clinical practice, normally the investigator, the physician, focusing only in the disease and not uh, focusing the subject with the disease. And for this reason also, they are not following very well the, the importance of the monitoring the adherence of the treatment of the patient. There are several causes of not to adhere to the treatment, but I think the most important is physician-related. Mm -hmm. It means the patient uh, not have uh, from not receive from the physician the right time to educate. The physician don't have the time to educate the patient for lack of ability, but also because the physician don't receive a training how to train the patient. Yes. And really, uh, the physician are not trained to monitor the patient adherence. Right. And, uh, and also because a lot of physicians are alone doing the management of the patient. The physician cannot have the support of, a, as you call, a multifunctional team with several other healthcare professional figures yeah. supporting him, like nurses, physiotherapists, thera occupational therapists, psychologists. Yeah. But other important causes is really related to the patient. 
and is related to the problem of education. The patient cannot have an adequate, uh, in, have an inappropriate uh, education from the physician. And he cannot uh, understand very well the diagnosis, the disease, and the treatment objectives. Yeah. And for this reason, the patient can have a wrong perception of the treatment effect and the risk of the treatment. And the, the patient, a lot of times, they don't have a, a clear understanding of the treatment instruction mm -hmm. and also in the how to follow up the routine or to include in the routine, their daily life, uh, the treatment. And a lot of patients uh, forgot to take the medication. Yeah. Yeah. Other key important is re related to the treatment, to the therapy, and is related to the tolerability of the treatment, but also in specific to the complexity of the treatment regimen, uh, the route of administration, of the duration of the treatment. And obviously, if the patient uh, receives uh, several treatments, uh, the previous treatment uh, failure, there are less motivation to start a new treatment, uh, to be compliant a new treatment. Right, but you would really consider physician-related reasons to be the most important. Yes, but it's not only physician-related. In some way, in my vision, you have uh, the subject in the center, and around the subject uh, with the disease, uh, we have really the physician, we have the other ca healthcare professional team, yeah. we have the caregiver, we have the family, the patient association. All these people are key players in the management of the patient, in the management of the disease, and also to, <laughs> to support the patient to adhere to the treatment. But it's one part of the 360 degree management of the patient. Sure. And how do you think we can really measure patient ad adherence? There are different systems. I normally I define in the direct system, like a patient report, drug accountability. Normally we use more in uh, interventional study and electronic monitoring. Okay. And also there are some indirect evaluation, yeah. like uh, refilling and also chemical markers. Obviously, uh, chemical markers is not available for all the treatment, but yeah. I think it's very useful when we have uh, some chemical markers, uh, you know, validated for specific disease. And also is a huge motivation for the patient because the patient and the physician have a specific marker to follow up to understand is the, if the patient are answering to the treatment and also is adhering to the treatment. Okay. But a lot of this uh, method is really a sort of uh, objective method, <laughs> as a really subjective evaluation, and yeah. can be easily manipulated as the drug accountability. The patient can uh, use the pill, uh, the vials, etc., but uh, don't, don't take really the treatment. The most uh, Objective evaluation of adherence is really the use of electronic monitoring. We can have some new devices for injectable medicine for the tablet, but all these devices is uh, need to have more study, more tests to be, you know, user friendly for all the patients and for the different treatment. Yeah. But I think another important measure of support to encourage the patient to adhere to the treatment is all the technology as telemedicine, also to remember the patient to take the drug. Mm -hmm. Right. So you'd say telemedicine is um, a very successful method to improve patient adherence? Yes, but telemedicine is not really one system to monitoring adherence, but to implement, to increase the communication between the patient and the physician. Okay, that's certainly one of the most successful methods to improve patient adherence that you've noticed. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Maybe some, no, for example, some short message like SMS by telephone, please remember to take your drug, you know, something yeah. simple. Is something telemedicine is not really, you are not measuring, evaluating the adherence, but you are a sort of memo for the patient. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And in what disease areas have you noted non-adherence to be more of a problem, and why do you think that is? Obviously, in my clinical experience and also in my therapeutic area, it's very clear that all the chronic disease, yeah. when they determine some chronic treatment, and also they have some chronic disability progression, yeah. is, the, is the disease normally have more problem in the compliance and to persist and to the treatment. In specific, uh, if you make a literature research, you can have uh, uh, imagine about what is uh, really the problem in diabetes, uh, hypertension, HIV, and uh, in the neurodegenerative disease, which are my specialization, yes. but also uh, is really one of the most common problems, is like a multiple sclerosis, Parkinson disease. I mentioned before the patient uh, uh, several times forgot uh, the treatment, is yes. one of the most common reasons why is uh, the patients are not adherent, but one of the reasons is really not only the attitude of the patient, but because the patient can have a cognition or mood alteration. Yeah. Great. Well, Elizabeth, many thanks for your time and thank you for your insights. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.